So I feel like I should mention this before I start talking about Starlink, is that I understand that the toys to life concept is pretty, a lot of people think it's very greedy, and in my opinion, I feel like that the whole concept can be done well, I feel like Amiibos did it well, but then again, Amiibos are barely toys to life. And series like Skylanders sort of really cemented that it can be done in a way that a lot of people will find just pretty greedy because they're essentially just pieces of plastic that have no use outside of that one singular game and of course that one singular series. And while I do feel like Ubisoft has made some choices that they shouldn't have made, like in my opinion I feel like pricing the Starship packs at $40 in Canadian that's a lot of money for something that has no real use outside of one game. But as I was saying, even though I feel that way, I still really am looking forward to playing Starlink just because of everything besides that one feature. So in this video, I want to spend some time to talk about why Starlink looks really fun and I really want to play it. Of course though, like I mentioned in every video, this is my opinion, and if you have your own opinion, make sure to leave it in the comments. But without further ado, let's get into this. So I want to just basically, so I want to just finish up my points on the whole Toys to Life concept before I get into most of the actual game. I really like collecting things, I feel like amiibos are really nice to collect, and while Skylanders and stuff like that, is not as much of a joy to collect, I can understand the appeal to other people. However, I feel like where Starlink really shines is that it takes this concept to the next level with introducing spaceships, which, you know, you can actually put the characters in the spaceships and attach that to your controller. I really do feel that the Starship packs are a good concept because they add more to the actual game, they have more value, and attaching more and more to the ship and then actually having it appear in the game is a novel concept however it may get worn it may just wear out over time and i could see that happening considering that when skylanders first came out it was just as revolutionary and as time has gone on now it's not as revolutionary however what i really want to talk about is the game itself so if you don't want to get the starter pack you can actually get the digital deluxe version which is a full price not an extra 20 or 30 bucks depending on where you live to get the actual figure pack i think that for a lot of people the digital deluxe pack is going to be enough but in my opinion i'm that sort of collector guy so i may be looking at the actual starter pack but then again the digital deluxe version just gets you everything that you actually need but as i was saying talking about the actual game itself I feel like making the game open world was a great decision because I always felt like what Skylanders really fell short on was that once you finish the game there isn't really much else to do, but with Starlink it's open world, there's a lot more to do, there's so much content and I feel like it's a much better bang for your buck compared to something like the Skylanders series. Sure if you keep playing the game for long enough it'll eventually get tiresome, but I feel like it'll be, you'll have a lot more time in this game than something like any of the Skylander games. The gameplay looks really fun. I saw some trailers and I saw some gameplay too. It looks like something I could get into. I feel like the only problem though is that I don't know if it'll get stale after a while. I guess I really do, I'll have to pick it up for myself to see. But still, the game looks, it looks pretty nice too. And that's something I want to touch on. The actual presentation is decent. On other consoles, it looks... On other consoles, from what I've heard, on other consoles, it looks pretty good. But on the Nintendo Switch, from what I've seen, I've seen some articles saying that apparently the Snowdrop engine does not actually run that well on the Switch. And it's not even at HD resolution too. So, you're not going to get a full 720p, which that's, that's kind of disappointing, but still... I feel I'm looking forward to playing the game even without the presentation because I would probably get it on my Switch just because of the portable aspect and although the presentation will not be as good as say the Xbox One X or the PS4 Pro, I feel like it'll still, I'll be able to get by it in my opinion. Because if the game is actually really good, then I don't care how it looks, I just want a fun experience and I feel like Starlink Battle for Atlas will provide that. 
Now, of course, if the game looks great on the Switch and if Ubisoft is able to optimize it more, then great. But I feel like gameplay just takes more of a priority over presentation in most cases. But obviously, it would be better if it looked nice, but that's not as much of a priority in my opinion. But what I really wanted to touch on is Star Fox. So, on the Nintendo Switch, you can actually get Star Fox. You can actually play Star Fox in the game, and you probably know that if you've seen the trailers. And in my opinion, I think that this was a very... This was just brilliant marketing on Ubisoft's part. And I feel like for Star Fox fans... This is going to really appeal to them because it's open world and it has Star Fox in it. So technically, this is an open world Star Fox game. It's not exactly an open world Star Fox game, but because you can play Star Fox and it has a lot of Star Fox elements in it, I feel like that this will satisfy that margin of people. Now, I really... Star Fox is one series that I really wanted to get into, and I feel like it could be one of my favorite Nintendo series if I tried it. I never picked up Star Fox Zero, but I feel like this could be one of... This could be my entry into the series. If I can actually get into this, this could set the expectations high for the next Star Fox game. Which, that's another thing, if we are going to see another Star Fox game on the Switch. I do feel like we are going to see another Star Fox game... But I feel like with Starlink Battle for Atlas taking the center stage, I feel like it is going to be a while, say maybe a year or two, until we see an actual full release of an R Star Fox game. So to wrap up my final feelings on Starlink Battle for Atlas, I don't own the game yet, I'm just really looking forward to it, and after seeing trailers and seeing people hype up the game, I think that it's going to be pretty good i think it's going to be something that i'm going to be interested in and i do plan on picking it up this weekend which if you're watching in the future that'll be around october 21st october 20th i just hope that ubisoft does iron out the presentation issues because that's really the only gripe i've been seeing people talk about for the switch version but that's not as important as gameplay but like still that is my opinion and if you have your own opinion make sure to let me know in the comments I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to share it on social media. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, see you.